wallet is sobbing. I can hear it. I can hear it in the hall now. It is breaking down, crying. Turns out that Attila, the arrogant so-and-so, he's got a fake hammer. Oh, a fake? Yeah. Whoa. As I say, dick. So I'm here with uh, one of our Patreon supporters. It's Big Dove. You all know him from his YouTube channel. And he's a superb coverage of various cons around uh, America, but uh, especially Legion's Con. Uh, He did some amazing coverage last year. Uh, him and Kent were a dream team, a double act, I think, uh, in in some ways picked up. But uh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah it was uh, Kent and I did. We uh, tried to give you the full experience, if you remember. Yeah, absolutely. Time. Yeah. And uh, a lot of work goes into that, be it uh, obviously a lot, all the filming, but all the putting together afterwards. And uh, I can certainly... Uh, Slightly relate uh, from the small bit of work I do on the podcast, um, the amount of uh, video footage that you guys have to go through is uh, incredible. (laughs) So I definitely have a lot of respect. If you see us disappearing at Legion's Con for 30 minutes, we're dumping footage off of our camera or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trying yeah, not to clog up the hard cards, drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you've got the, the RSI in your arm and your elbow from the, all the mouse work you're doing yes. the, the weeks afterwards, putting it together. Yes. Rightio, so we had the Ashes of Ek Bendor uh, revealed to us uh, last night as we record this. And... Uh, What's your overall thoughts of the way Big Dub? Is it uh, what you're expecting? Is it uh, we happy? Uh, uh, yeah, I like the wave, and I think it is uh, what I'm what I was expecting. I think um, you know we have we are a very blessed community as a Legion's community. We're very blessed. I think part of that creates um, expectations for every single thing to be what, what you know the dragon, the oath, or the whatever the the fill in the blank. So I certainly don't envy. Uh, the team over there um, managing that because they're they're so front facing and you know I think the word really is intimate with their fan base yeah. um, and so this was a, I think the, the only unexpected thing for me was the size of the wave I think it was a, a few figures bigger than I expected it to be um, but we got goblins I love goblins so a goblin yeah. the pack that's great um, but it's I I enjoyed it I thought it was a fun reveal I think the the team did good. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I think it's pretty, pretty much in line with what I expected. We're sitting right here at the, at what would normally be the all-star wave, yeah, uh, that time frame. Right. Yeah, we were... And, uh, so yeah, yeah, I was happy with it. Cool. And, uh, what about the story? You, like Jeremy teased a bit of story. How did you feel that lined up, uh, you know, with this wave or? Yeah. I, I, what I liked, um, is that good builders, Got the story, they uh, the the bones on the fallen angel, why they're gold. You know, I yeah, like that, that kind sweet. of story. It was interesting, kind of bouncing around between the the ages, or at least the way I was kind of interpreting it, as we were getting some characters from from old, old, and yeah. and some modern. And I thought that was interesting. Um, yeah, maybe a bit uh, confusing if you're not paying a lot of attention. But yeah. Yeah, probably the people that p- are not paying a lot of attention don't don't care much for the lore. That's not why they're <laughs> buying the figures. Um, but yeah, no, I enjoyed very much uh, the story, and I did I did like the how they find a way to tie in uh, the, the reason Otho wears blue is this, and, and you know, those things I think are uh, are creative. Um, you know, in storytelling, I think often whoever is a storyteller doesn't necessarily know the end when they begin. Or they don't yeah. know all the bones when they begin. They find them on the way. <laughs> yeah, and, and they find them because of their audience, right? Yeah. You maybe didn't need to say why Otho wore blue when he was the lowest selling unit of the first yeah. wave. But now he's popular for whatever reason. And okay, let's tie it in. I think that's, I think that's good storytelling. I think it's creative. Yeah, absolutely. I love, uh, there's been a lot of that sprinkled in over the last uh, couple of waves. Yeah, for sure. Um were you like us? Were you expecting maybe slightly more version twos in the, in this one, or you know yeah. stuff like that? Or yeah, I agreed with um, in your last episode. The, uh, I I thought it might be a full version two. Yeah, that's where I was going. And I think some of that was the see what heroes remain uh, that type of language in the tease, like 
what characters are left over, you're going to say, okay, you know, we'll see their new mm-hmm. form, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, but then also, I think for me, it's because it was in the place of the All Stars wave, right? Yeah. So my mind said, okay, we'll get version twos. I mean, I guess technically we got three of the nine are version yeah. twos. If you the two builders and then the the I think the, the two builders was the surprise in terms of of what we were maybe thinking of version twos. You know? Yeah. But but at the same time, you know. I know everybody expected Otho. I didn't expect that because I feel like that's when we're in the room at G-Con. Is when yeah. You want that reaction, right? You, yeah. If there is ever a dragon, which, yeah. you know, I, I, I think the fan base has created that they've said there will be. Um, logistics aside from that, which I think are probably a different conversation that would be interesting. Yeah, exactly. Have, yeah. Um, you can't release a dragon that might be five, six, seven hundred dollars, something like that, when you're already going to have this, I mean, it would be a fifteen hundred dollar wave. Who of us, you know, I, you know, yeah. I do fine and, and can kind of buy what I want to buy. Even me, I'd be like, ah, I don't know. Yeah. That, I mean, there's, you know, then you're getting into the realm of like statue collectors, but they buy like maybe two, three statues a year for that price. OK, so maybe their budget uh, evens out the same as uh, collectors like us who and, who kind and of, i abandoned you know, I, I used to get you know quarter scale third scale statues mm-hmm. you know i have 10 or 12 of them but once the shipping got to be 350 450 dollars you're like That's a big i can't factor, i can't yeah. pay that just to get the thing here yeah it's a whole yeah, wave yeah. of mythic legions that is yeah absolutely yeah and uh as you say here the price is yeah it, it's slightly bigger than we thought but i think the price mm-hmm. is definitely a good deal 420 all in is uh is not too bad at all for, uh, for no we're gonna get uh, an ogre and a centaur and some deluxe um, two pack yeah I'm not I, it, I think it was more than what I anticipated but not more than what yeah. I think is fair absolutely and what about the reuse here um, I mean we do get some new parts but there is a good bit of reuse which is traditional I don't know if um, if that if that's in anything that's yeah. flagged up to you or. I mean, I certainly have seen, I mean, there's a lot of the discussion around that. Um, you know, is it, does it make you feel uh, disappointed? I, I think only again, because of expectations, we've had several, if you think about the, the Necronominous wave, the Sons yeah. of the Red Star wave, the All-Star 6 wave, and even uh, if you do Cosmic, the Ox Crew, where all yeah. kinds of new parts for the last four major reveals and every other toy line. I mean, you know, we don't even think about it. If you're a Marvel legends collector, like how many, how many 10 years, the Bucky cat mold did it exist before people started complaining? Like, and even now it's the Vulcan is the new body that that Marvel legends uses. That's popular. And people are like, yep, it's on the Vulcan body. Yep. It's on the Vulcan body. Yep. It's on the Vulcan body. (laughs) They don't even think about, Oh, that's reuse. Of course it's reuse. That's the way this industry works. So, uh, you know, I understand, like, I don't think people are wrong that are saying, oh, I was hoping it'd be more. I just think that's not the economics of a thing like this. And Oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, we got a bunch of new heads, um, you know, a bunch of new, different ways to use the parts. And even I think like that skeleton, we don't have any of those parts in hand yet. So we're like, oh, it's reused. We don't have any of it yet. Like none of yeah. that is in our hands. That's true. I was chatting to to the guys after or this morning uh, and some of those parts, I was like, are they new? And they were like, no, it came with, say, Manisha Cinderhorn or something was a skirt piece. Yeah. And I was like, OK, but well, that's new to me still. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't pay that close attention sometimes to, to those, especially like skirt pieces and stuff that you mightn't recognize. And if we go back and look at the, the first Kickstarter way or the first several ways, yeah. there is extensive reuse just figure to figure. Like it yeah. was just a different paint with a different head, but it was the same exact. Yeah, you know, how many versions of that kind of standard night body? Yeah, that is on the skeleton too. Like we have so so many of that. So it, it's inevitable that now these new body tar- types and pieces they're going to update things with with yeah. those and get those into the library. So I don't have a problem with it. I understand why it frustrates people, or or people say, well, maybe this is a pass for me. That's fine, you know. Um, Oh, but we also have a, a next and when these come out, right? So this looks like an expedited wave that could come out in mm-hmm. less than 12 months, kind of like the last All Stars wave did. We're going to get in that same 12 months legions of new pieces from those three waves yeah. that are also coming at the same time. It, you know, so I don't, you know, 
I agree that it does. It's a, I mean, Jeremy said it's a repaint wave. I mean, that's how he refers to it as. But that's part yeah. of the toys. It's part of toys. It, it's true. M- maybe could have possibly been more flagged up in the, yes. in the blur. But I also understand that they want to create the hype. But uh, they maybe then, if they're creating the hype, have to understand that there might be some people that are disappointed. I think the majority aren't, though. But there is definitely some people that uh, expected maybe more on the level of a G Con wave which yeah. doesn't really make sense. But at the same time, as we go along with, with legions and it's growing and there's more and more people, um, you know, expectations sometimes do get ahead of reality. And, and I, again, I don't envy their role because how do you, you want to market, you want people excited. Yeah. And so you don't want to say, Hey, Oh, by the way, uh, these are all going to be parts <laughs> you've seen before, you know, you don't want to yeah. do that. Um, yeah. But then again, we create so many expectations, the community so intimate. And again, that's why I keep saying it's in place of the all-star way. That's mm-hmm. the way I view it, which would be full reuse, complete and True. full reuse. So these are all new characters. So if in this wave it was called all-star seven plus and we had three things we voted on, everybody would be happy. Yeah. True. Everybody that's would be like, true. cool, that's cool. That's a, that's a great point, yeah. Um, s- sweet thing here is we get uh, factions from each or characters from each faction except the Noble Baron Red Star which we had a load of last November yeah. and we get one from each and two from Basilia so I think that's great for keeping everyone happy I think yes. uh, in terms of somebody's probably going to get a type of figure they like even if they're uh, uh, somebody that's cherry picking you know their favourites or whatever Yeah, uh, I think that's, that's sweet thing. And, right, and so it continued get, the trend of the um, kind of warring factions, interestingly yeah, enough. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little bit of verses in each, yeah. you know, you can pick verses in each of the of the, of the characters. And then you got the, the master of records there at the end, who's kind of reading, you know, trying to get things back together. In a yeah, video. D- D- Dumbledore, Dumbledore. Right yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. So to, to get us out of here then... Uh, Give us your favorite. Uh, so if you could only get one figure, if uh, if suddenly uh, the financial crisis hit and it was like, right, Big Dub, you can only get one figure. What are you getting? Mm. So my favorite, and if I could only get one, are actually two different answers. Oh, that's even perfect. So I'll give you two. I'll give you two answers there then, because that's. I think my my favorite is the Shadow Centaur. I think it looks really cool. Okay, I like. Cool. Um, I'm a fantasy guy purely at heart, and so. Any creatures and, and that kind of thing, um, I love it. But if I can only only get one in that setting, like money tight, I would get the Night Builder kit because that is a bunch of different things in yes. one. Gotcha. And we all have parts that we could use with the rest of those parts. You know, we have extensive yeah. uh, bodies right. that we can use that yeah. for. So I'd only get that one. But I, I think the Shadow Centaur uh, is unique. You know, I like to see them go in more in that realm of the creatures. Um, but that's not the one I would buy. Yeah. Well, very. I got to play with it in the Rich. bathtub, John. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's what Rich does because that's uh, that's uh, I think his favorite from the wave, uh, from what have you spoken so far, uh, is the the Shadow Center. So, you're you're in good company there. Um, Rich is also a big uh, fantasy guy for that kind of stuff. So, that's awesome. And then anything that would be close to a pass or you know lower down on the priority list. You know, believe it or not, uh, if I was, I mean, I, I've already, uh, actually, Rufus, my dog, ordered me the all, and I got a, uh, <laughs> right man, after the, wa- yeah, right after the wave <laughs> launched, I got an email that said, Rufus says, Happy Father's Day with a Four Horsemen gift card. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. What, a, I need to get a dog that gives me Father's Day present. Yeah, I, I told him, good. I'm going to, I'm going to need him to get on Microsoft Teams for me during the week if he's <laughs> that good on the computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you just sit there and listen to that call. Yes, yes. So uh, I did. I, I went already ordered the the all in thanks to thanks to my puppy for Father's Day. But yeah. um, probably the Frost Ogre, which I, it surprises me because yeah. and I like big creatures, but I just don't love that ogre scale. Um, you have them all; they kind of just kind of sit in the back. They don't move real well. Um, yeah, and and that one is the most visible uh, reuse to me. Uh, yeah, just because there's so few of those, you're like, that's okay, true. Yeah, yeah, same. you can kind of see it. Yeah, yeah, very good. Well, um, yeah, I, I would be, I would be similar enough with you on the ogre in terms of, uh, they, they'd be ones I'd never really buy multiples of, uh, and you know, I do a bit of customizing and painting and and pop and swapping, but, 
uh, tend to not do that with the ogres. So that's uh, probably where I'd net out as well. Um, well, thanks very much uh, for joining yeah. us, Big Dub. Uh, this was awesome. Um, yeah. Really, really cool to get your opinion. I love when you're on the show with Jeremy as well, uh, when you talk legions. That's always a, a treat uh, on his show. Thank you. And, yeah, and of course, that. your own YouTube channel. So just shout out your YouTube channel there for people if they, they should know yeah. already, but you know. Yeah, just youtube.com slash big dub. I have my own URL and uh, we do, it's just vlog style really um, yeah. for the family, but we're a pretty nerdy family. So we tend to do lots of stuff with toys and, you know, the hobby, hobby based things. Like right now I'm going to a toy swap meet that'll be on there. But then also you get to see, you know, I get to go see my parents and, and then some of that stuff. Yeah. So uh, I think, uh, and the same with, with you guys over there, um, people become fans of the people, not the yeah. content necessarily. And so I try to connect and, uh, you know, get to meet people. But and, I, I love that you're, you know, it's, it's mostly positivity, you know, and without being like obviously overly, you know, fake positive, it's actually just genuinely, or you're trying to look on the good side of, of things. And I, I uh, try, we, you know, we need a lot more of that in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh especially on the internet right it's um yeah, totally there's there's so many the way i always view life right there's so many things beyond our control that are gonna yeah. be challenging you know and 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 even not just things like you know hard things like illness or but just yeah. traffic or uh, the groceries are too high like we can't do anything about that we truly not can't. really yeah but yeah. what we can do is approach it with an attitude that is the best we can and that brings everybody up around you um and so we really try to uh, focus on what we can even when we have to cut back because things are expensive or whatever like like you said a, a good way to look at this way well if you only get one what's the one you get and you and enjoy it if you can't afford to get them all but you can enjoy that Hopefully. one instead of thinking yeah. about the ones you can't get and it's uh, it's just a perspective it's kind of the way i was raised and uh, yeah. try to be optimistic and positive so i appreciate that comment john Absolutely. And uh, yeah, there will be people that will be only getting one or two, be it for budgetary or whatever reasons. And uh, they should also be totally welcome in the community. Yeah, and absolutely. They have every right to be part of it. And uh, they can always listen to the shows and live vicariously through some of us crazy people who get all ins. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple all ins. Cheers, Big Dub. Thanks a million yes, for that. Yes. Thanks, John. My wallet is sobbing. I can hear it. I can hear it in the hall now. It is breaking down, crying. So I'm here with Matt Drake, another one of our awesome patrons. Uh, there's so many of our awesome patrons. I'm so happy. Uh, Matt, how are you doing? Great, John. Thank you so much for having me. And it's great to talk with you face to face, at least it is screen indeed, to screen yeah. uh, for, for the first time. <laughs> yeah, I'm enjoying this so much because there is some people. I mean, there's obviously people I've talked to before, either. Uh, met them at uh, Legions Con or, you know, on shows or whatever. But uh, there is also other people like you that I haven't talked face to face with yet. And uh, this is awesome. Great. Um, so overall, how how are you feeling after the Ashes of Agbendor reveals? Uh, is it something uh, so I, that floated your boat? Yeah, my my original prediction in, in my mind, I didn't put it out there. So I guess it's easy to say now, but um, <laughs> no, we, be we believe you. My original prediction was going to be something like, I think uh, Mal had said more so a, a, um, a, a wave kind of like covenant of shadows, something that was real story based. And that's something yeah. that I know Eric and Jeremy uh, uh, during the uh, presentation, they talked a lot about the fact that they were going kind of going back to that. Uh, sort of wave yeah. so that i really like that because i do like the story and that's one of the reasons why i like your allegiance is you guys really dig into the story and <laughs> yeah, the background absolutely, um, yeah yeah you know because because i'm not really much of a you know i'm not a customizer i'm i'm very not even really much of a poppin and popper and swapper I, I don't have a lot mm -hmm. of you know that sort of creativity when you know i'm also a lego fan when i build lego i use the instructions <laughs> i follow <laughs> yeah. exactly the instructions so um yeah i'll put a different head or you know some of the weapons and things but yeah um so i really like the representation of the actual figures in the story uh for the most part that's that's sort of the the bulk of my collection so i like seeing more of the story and um you know those guys do a really good job in the fact that you get a little bit of the story but then you you get so many more questions about it as well yeah. right so i like the fact that we got some people from way back when uh before mm, the first that great was, war that's very cool yeah. uh and then also the newer characters too so kind of fleshing that out i'm really looking forward to the book coming out to hopefully you know kind of tie oh, some yeah. of this stuff together 
Well, we um, are too as well on the podcast because we're going to get a lot of uh, a lot of episodes out of that book. <laughs> you got to get the audio, audible contract, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're working on it. We're working on okay. it. You know, we'll we'll sign you up as our agent. All right, you sounds good. Be, uh, you seem to be very uh, competent when it comes to business, being a professor and all that. So sounds I, good. I yeah, uh, you're mm-hmm. a numbers guy, so we can get you on board. Absolutely, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, yeah, the, I mean, there was uh, some really awesome story elements here. I loved the the bit about the angels and then the gold mm-hmm. skeleton, how they yes. tied that in. That mm-hmm. really uh, amp, it kind of ramped up that figure for me, the gold skeleton. Mm-hmm. That was always one that was a little bit of a weird one, but I, I kind of liked it. But there was plenty yeah. of people that don't like the gold skeleton because they just thought it was a bit random. Well, the, th- the um, things they're doing are, are so... I guess maybe it's a little obvious, but it's really nice for collectors in that you get the older version if you want it. Yeah. But then you have so many more parts and and accessories to be able to make a totally new version too. So it really does as best as they can, I think, to satisfy both groups of people. Yeah, that's for sure. That's Mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and then what about, uh, I mean, I, I guess you're not too concerned with the parts reuse then? No, I, the, the only thing that I would say about the parts reuse is, you know, I, I really like that we got the librarian, right? Yeah. The story aspect. I thought that was really important to get that character. Um, the head, it's, I'm not sure if it's exactly like the other wizards we have, but it, it looks a lot like it. It, it looks like them. Yeah. yeah I think I it's can't, a different can't really head, tell, but, it's, but very it's very similar. similar. Style. I would have liked maybe a little bit of a different style there. Mm-hmm. Right. But in general, the parts themselves, I mean, the, with the paint that they give them, it really yeah. doesn't, you know, bother me to have uh, that sort of reuse. I don't, I don't really mind. I really, you know, going back to the rest of my collection, I, I like a lot of the older figures that, yeah, as we know, all pretty much look the same if you strip yeah. the paint <laughs> off of them. Uh, I really like that look in general, so I, I'm not really b- that bothered uh, by it. I, I don't need every wave to be pushing the boundaries of, yeah. you know, all kinds of new parts, you know, for me. But I, I can understand if you're, you know, somebody who takes those parts and then does other things with them. Obviously, you, you'd rather have newer parts to be able to do better things with them or different Absolutely, things with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, faction wise, what's your what's your faction of choice in general? My faction Sons of the Red Star. Okay, in so general, you got, a, yep. you got plenty of those in November. So. Exactly, right? So happy about that. Um, I, I also do like, I know you're going to, I hope you don't kick me off here, but I do like Etheron. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So, that's cool. I know it's not As your I favorite, say, right? I love I love the figures from mm-hmm. Etheron, uh, the faction itself. Right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's not my bag, but that, um, that's I definitely fine. like the new, uh, I think it's Yosef, the, the new angel yeah. there to match the others. I really love that paint job. The only one I have right yeah. now is Gadriel which I really like. And uh, yeah. I have Ignatius on order in the, in the all-stars. So yeah, uh, I think all three of them together would look really good. Yeah. I'm very happy that they re-released Ignatius because mm-hmm. now I'll have him as well as Gadriel and then uh, this new guy. Right. And uh, as a, I know you're not a customizer, but mm-hmm. uh, as a customizer myself, I can tell you anything in the white realm is an absolute pain to paint. Mm-hmm. And look good. Mm-hmm. Uh, it gets very chalky and, you know, yeah. even the good quality uh, paints, it's the, the whites are never that great. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Uh, well, as you've always, it's always said, always right, it's, it's never, you're never better than the factory. So, no, right. No, exactly. No, no. Different maybe uh, sometimes, sure. but Absolutely. Uh, yeah, for, for, for stuff like that, no. And mm-hmm. you won't get the durability or anything like that. So it's right. always, uh, it's always good. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, uh, if you could, if I said to you, sorry about that, now you can only order one of these, what are you going to be going for? Oh, if you can only order one. Oh. <laughs> sound like my wife. <laughs> this, hurts, this hurts people. <laughs> this hurts people when I ask it. <laughs> I was going to say, sound like my wife. That's what she wants me to order, just one, <laughs> right? Uh, I, I, think I, I think I would go with, uh, with Yosef. Okay, awesome. That's a cool pick. I really, Olympic, yeah. you know, I, th- I think that's, I, I just really love that look and the colors yeah. um, and just the whole the presence there of having, you know, those wings spread yeah. out on the shelf. It's, uh, you know, and also connecting with the other ones that we've had, uh, or yeah. I guess with the one that we've had, uh, it's nice to be able to, uh, to draw that connection. Yeah, he's on, he's mm-hmm. definitely on my list uh, for uh, multiples, I would say, uh, mm-hmm. down the line. So uh, I, w- I will say, I'm curious to, to, I'll ask a question if you don't mind. <laughs> Sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I guess, you know, it's my job. I ask questions your, all the time. It's your right? chance uh, to be yeah. on the show and, and well, talk to us, so why not? So about the uh, question about the night builder, right? Yeah. 
So, you know, again, as I said, I, I'm not a huge popper and swapper and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just thinking that for myself, you know, I'm still going to get one, right? I like to be able yeah. to have that old, I really like the colors and, and the way they look and, and all that. But I, personally, I would have rather had two full bodies in that pack. Yeah. Just because I, I feel like you're going to have a lot of parts. I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of people have other, other bodies and things like that to be able to put them on. But I just get the a lot of people are going to have a lot of these parts just sitting in a drawer or a bag uh, yeah. because you only have one full body. Yeah, it's. I guess it's a, mm -hmm. it's a plus and minus for them. Right. I don't think it would have costed much more to put in the arms and legs. That exactly. You need for, just two. The rest, right? rest yeah. of the bits are there. But on the other hand, would that then make people buy less? So, yeah. True. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Then you got like doubles and triples of plus all the pauldrons and, and the, yeah. <laughs> all the other things uh, too. But I, I guess just me personally, the, that's yeah, kind I, of what I would have absolutely. preferred. Absolutely. Com completely valid point. Um, I guess that's where the community aspect comes in. Sure. Uh, uh, for example, Chris James, who I also talked to in these interviews, he's organizing the the fodder swap. Oh yeah, he's gone. So great idea. Know, yep. That's that's a thing where you could maybe pick up a, even even in advance of getting this wave. Think, all right, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and get arms and legs, arms and legs, <laughs> nice arms and legs. <laughs> I never thought I'd be a, you know, a dealer in body parts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, 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 and it not be a crime. I feel like a Victorian <laughs> grave robber here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're doing it legally though. So it's all good. It's all good. Uh, there's going to be. And no it's encouraged. It's not even just legal. Scandal, it's encouraged, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. It's absolutely encouraged. Absolutely yeah. encouraged. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the opposite end of the scale, uh, if you were ordering an all-in and I came along and uh, stole one of them out of the box, which one would you be least upset about? I think I think the Shadow Centaur. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I just... answer on this question, unfortunately. I, I don't mind the Centaurs. And I think this yeah. one looks better than a fairy. As I do like the colors and the, mm -hmm. the pauldrons and all that better um, on this one. I, do, yeah. I, I don't know. The overall look, though, I just, I don't know. I'd rather just have a guy on a horse yeah. than a centaur. Gotcha. You know, just, gotcha. just personally, that's my, I'm, I'm not the, the biggest fan of the huge figures. Although, yeah. you know, it's a contradiction because I'm really looking forward to Sir Rook Jack because I really like that, <laughs> that armor and everything, right? I think yeah, it's, but that's, it's that look as well. Th that has a less, that's still a bit less of a shelf space right. kind of killer than the, the horse. Right. I have, a, yeah. I, I do like having a couple of horses, but I do have the problem on the shelves of like, mm. if I put a horse on this shelf, I'm going to have to go and put, you know, I'd like to have maybe one or two shelves per faction, right. you know, depending on how many is in the faction, you know, Arathir obviously needs more, but uh, sometimes if there's a horse in the faction, then you're like, well, that's nearly that whole shelf <laughs> <laughs> to put everyone else on the next shelf. Yeah. So it's a bit of a tricky one. Th this, uh, you know, as we get into the second decade of, of mythic legions um yeah. probably a good topic maybe when you guys are looking for one for a show about sort of how do how do we manage space you know in yeah. going forward because you know when a line just starts out it's not that hard right to manage the space yeah. but as it goes more and more people are all in or mostly in yeah. and you get these bigger and bigger things and and that's the whole double-edged sword with the dragon right is that yeah absolutely you know i'd, I'd love to have it i just i i don't really know if I can do it justice, you know, with, with having it, right. But I don't want to pass it up. Yeah. Right. So that's I'm the what same. I struggle You've with. heard me say that mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of really conflicted on the dragon. Uh, mm -hmm. I do think as a, as a showstopper piece, uh, I think in the main, it would be amazing for people. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe I'm okay if I eventually decide not to have it. Right. On the other hand, my wife's a big dragon fan, so it'd probably be the easiest ever one to kind of get, you know, to kind of, not that I get me to get the okay, but that she'd actually go, yeah, cool. Right. Go and order the $500 dragon, no problem. <laughs> not not uh, easiest, freak out when that big box shows up. Yeah, it would be the easiest conversation. Yeah, she'd be just as excited <laughs> as me for once, you know? Exactly. <laughs> it's like when we get the figure of Skuras, I, mm. I, I, I always give her the mugs because she she's a big tea drinker. Sure. Uh, so uh, she's always excited when they come in and there's a new mug. So there you that's go. like that's like my wife with um, I bought the new uh, Lego Baradur that came out from Lord of the Rings yesterday. Awesome. Yeah, I got oh, that. Yeah. Had no pushback there. Right. Because she loves it, too. No. So she's a she's a fan. Yeah, mm -hmm. I used to collect a lot of Lego before, uh, before right. COVID. And then I had to kind of scale back on one thing or another. So mm -hmm. decided to go for the legions. But uh, uh, 
uh, and my kid is big into Lego. So, yep. you know, that's a good way to get, good way to still get the, the kick. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to push him in the direction, you know, get yep. that Lords of the Ring set, you know. <laughs> well, there's only Lego a few of them here. that are available, so uh, <laughs> price-wise it, it's hard, but yeah. uh number of sets is cool. not that hard. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit mm -hmm. uh, upset that when I was getting uh, you know collecting Lego, it was probably 2016 to 2019, 20, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, they didn't have any Lord of the Rings. I would have loved. Right, that. they had just gone off at that time. Yeah, it was just, pretty much the, right. the gap. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was in the gap. You know, yep, the fantasy guy is in, <laughs> he was in the gap. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, so then, one last thing. Sure. Uh, you run a YouTube channel called Toylytics, which is a little bit related to your area of expertise, which is, uh, I guess, statistics and uh, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about that and what you're doing and also what's what's coming up. Yeah, thanks for thanks for mentioning it. Um, yeah, so I, I started a channel January 1st of this year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, it's only uh, a few months old at this point. But what I've been doing is I've been going through and it's actually been a, a a lot of months in the making is collecting uh, data about uh, sales of yeah. uh, mythic legions mainly but then cosmic uh, figure obscura i've also done uh, mondo i haven't done a video yet but i've collected mondo oh, uh, masters of the universe because cool. that's another line that i am into and collect so yeah um i've coll collected those two i was thinking about starting uh, savage crucible too because i could have like a complete data set like i have the complete yeah, data set for cosmic zero, legions because yeah. i started yeah. back in july of last year when they were first in people's hands. So I've collected all the data. And then what I'd like to do is every quarter, because I think that makes sense as far as the uh, the period of, of updating, uh, see how things have changed. And it's, it's really interesting to see how prices for some have really risen uh, and others are really going down. Uh, it's it's inter interesting to see how many of some figure sell versus another. You can kind of get a sense of how popular they are regardless of the price. Uh, some of those older advent of decay figures uh before the re-release i mean there were like kador i think in in all of um the last six months three had sold on ebay that was it. wow that was it <laughs> so there that figure was extremely hard to find before then so i'm really looking forward uh once we get into july uh and my next set of videos to being able to look at the uh the mystery box uh effect to see what happened to the the sales beforehand and then what happens afterwards because we'll have about a month and a half of data by that point Absolutely. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's a, uh, that's really uh, yep. interesting way of looking at it. And I think a lot of people would be interested in that. So they should definitely check out Toylytics and Toylytics. Um, yep. Like analytics it, with toys. That's it. You should also look now at the gold skeleton, maybe after this announcement. Right. Uh, well, there's the next, like nothing before. I think, next, I think yeah. maybe three or four of those has sold too. Right. So, okay, it so doesn't even make sense to even talk about averages and things like that. But maybe people will start uh, trying to offload theirs. That's or, true. Yeah, they or, might. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So after this, uh, this yeah. reveal it'll be interesting and to see as as a spirit as a as well. right mm -hmm. that's another one so uh yeah all those version twos they, they tend to have a little impact but for what i've seen it's never it's never like huge okay could yeah, be like, like off the top of my head vorgus um has kind of held his value yeah um although he's not maybe in the 200 to 250 range anymore no. he's maybe in the 150 range yeah you know so they do go down yeah yeah it's still mm -hmm. a lot of money, but it's not like you're not talking like, uh, you know, Uncan or, or, or right, exactly. Valgard or anything like that. Exactly. Very good, Matt. Um, mm -hmm. Well, this was an awesome chat. We will uh, definitely have to talk further about uh, doing an episode maybe after your uh, next Toylytics drop. Yeah, uh, sounds great. Uh, That'd be wonderful. We could, we, could, uh, we could do a little Euro Legions deep dive. And as you know, uh, Rich is... I'm sure Rich would be dive. happy about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually shared your video in our little, uh, you know, chat that we have for the podcast mm -hmm. where we, we do our prep and uh, he was like this is my guy <laughs> <You know? laughs> i love data i love spreadsheets that's it we'll so, have to have uh, a yeah have a, a couple drinks at legions con and uh, absolutely yeah totally discuss some important. spreadsheets <laughs> definitely yeah yeah you get your laptops out and <laughs> exactly a couple of have years. a go <laughs> as you'd say yeah. right technically he should be doing this interview and maybe uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make him jealous i'll say i talked to i talked to matt <laughs> well he uh, still probably has no internet though right <laughs> yeah yeah he's well he's just back from potato oh Lando, is he back I think okay he's, i think he's um He's actually doing what uh, you said we, we maybe need to do an episode on. He's, he's trying to make space <laughs> <laughs> with his uh, lots of Savage Crucible boxes. I think he's, uh, yep. his better half has decided, uh, Rich, you need to get all these boxes out of the way. So. And you can't hide those boxes either. No, 
They're big. They ha- they're all, well, I mean, they say and their logos, yeah. and the logo's all over it. <laughs> you can't even say it. This is, yeah. you know, paper towels or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, <laughs> that's, that's true. Yeah. Or it's, oh, that's stuff for the kids. Yeah, and there's like, no, 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 no secret about what's in there. Very good. Cheers, Matt. Thanks for all the right. chat. All right. Thanks, John. Take care. Love the podcast. So now I'm with uh, Jonathan Donath, Hedgehog Action. You all know him from YouTube, from the Saturday Live show. How are you doing, Jonathan? Uh, hello there. I'm doing quite well, John, especially now that yeah. I'm talking to you, man. How's it going? <laughs> oh, look at that. Smooth, smooth. Uh, yeah, I'm great. I'm great. Uh, and how are you feeling after last night's reveal? You had a sh- you were on the show last night, weren't you? On uh, Off World with Curtis. Yep, I was on the, the the panel that was on Off World directly after the reveal special uh, last night, and that was a lot of fun to talk to you know some of the other guys right after we you know took a look at all these new figures. Plus, you know, Trevor is on there, and he's the one that takes all the photos and everything. Yeah, it's cool to kind of insight there get his perspective. And you had Jeremy and Eric on for a short little t- a bit at the start. Yeah, that was a nice little surprise. They hopped in for a uh, a quick moment to say hi and uh, legitimize yeah. our uh, rascally little show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got your they got your number of viewers uh, cranked up a bit, and then you could continue on. Yeah, like that, well done. It's a great tactic. <laughs> good, good opening act. Good all, opening act. Yeah, we should all get a famous uh, famous people in for the first few minutes of the show, and then. Uh, and then we can crack on when uh-huh. people have have given us their attention. Uh, so you have a you have a little bit of a feeling uh, of what maybe other people thought of it, and obviously you have your own opinions. Uh-huh. So what? How's your general overall thoughts on the wave? What do you What are you feeling? I can be honest with you. I think it's kind of like a monster wave. I was not expecting a wave to have that kind of breadth. You know, um, I was thinking like because this feels like. You know, we're in the middle of the year right now. It feels like an interim wave. Like we know, you know, we don't know, but I think it's a pretty safe bet. We've got a big mythic wave coming at the end of the year. Something that'll kind of help celebrate the anniversaries that are going on with Four Horsemen Studios and the Mythic Legions line overall. So I figured this would be something of a setup for that. And maybe it is, but for a setup to get 10 figures. Um, yeah. and, and 10 figures is amazing. Also, one thing that sort of jumped out at me is I've been waiting for them to do a an updated, you know, Night Builder set. Um, I kind of assumed they would do that, uh, you know, eventually. Uh, but I figured something like that would also, again, probably be part of a smaller wave because that in and of itself is such a, an expansive set. You don't need to put that with a giant wave, but they did it anyway. Yeah, I would. I would have been thinking maybe uh, throwing that in with the reinforcements wave so Uh probably i was thinking maybe even next year um because probably reinforcements uh we've had reinforcements too kind of relatively recently so i was thinking maybe uh the reinforcements three if it comes is probably going to be next year so Uh a nice little surprise to get that night yeah everyone i've talked to so far even the the not so uh super night fans are very happy with that pack and all the stuff you get you know it's a it's a it's a massive set. I'm super excited yeah. about it, and it's one of those weird things where I kind of feel like that set uh, it can kind of be for anybody. Like I would presume that customizers, it's like a dream. You know, you have this massive oh, totally, set yeah. of all this brand new, you know, fodder essentially, all these different pieces, some new cloth goods and stuff like that. But if you're even if you're sort of relatively new to the idea of popping and swapping and stuff this is a great first set to get started personally i'm sort of in the middle there you know i've loved the line for a few years but i'm not the most experienced customizer but i'm excited to get this set mess around with the different pieces and even you know try to paint some of them up yeah and i mean you know if if we see this as uh, maybe a nod towards getting maybe otto in the next wave or something like that I, Which is going to make this uh, even better. Yeah. I mean, I know there was a lot of speculation about whether or not, you know, because people were thinking that maybe there would be version twos as part of this wave. And there there yeah. was. So Otho's name obviously has come up because yeah. people want him so bad. But I mean, they're building to a crescendo is sort of the way I look at it. And they're giving you the teases saying, hey, look, you know, this is coming, right? <laughs> like for years, yeah. they've said they wouldn't do Otho as part of an all-stars wave because he's too important. 
right? He's too yeah. important, meaning he's going to be a version two. They're going to, they're going to do him up and you know, 10th anniversary. I, I would I, put it this way. I feel pretty confident in saying that version two of Otho is coming. And I think you're right. I think this blue shield, uh, a soldier set is sort of a nod to stick around, you know? Yeah. I mean, and when I saw it revealed, I kind of thought to myself, well, you were probably not going to get Otho this time now. Uh, I, I, we're going to get him at some stage, as you say. Um, but I just thought maybe it's very similar figures. You know, obviously Otho is a bit different, but, you know, in terms of build, would be very similar uh, and paint scheme. So uh, that makes sense. Um, and uh, what about the story? Uh, how did you feel about, you know, the way the story was kind of hinted at, uh, you know, in, in the kind of hype and then how how that translated into what you got. Maybe, I don't know if we, if on our side with our episode last week, we kind of maybe felt that uh, <laughs> we we got it wrong. Uh, we certainly did get it wrong. That's mm -hmm. what I titled the episode. But uh, maybe the story steered us in that direction. I don't know. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if you would call, would call it a swerve or not, but, you know, with the last few main Mythic Legions waves, you know, part of the way the wave was introduced was what part of the story are these figures playing the most prominent role? You know, whether it be, you know, Poxus coming back, you know, Arathir, you know, the, the, the rising sun's wave. So when the, you know, the story is announced with the tease a, a week ago or whatever it was. And it's like the dark four have fallen, you know, that's a, that's an intention yeah. grabber, right? <laughs> that's <a> big, whoa. <laughs> um, but again, I still feel like this is very much uh, a wave, both in terms of figures and in terms of how they're connecting the story to the wave releases, that's still very much a setup, um, you know, setting up the big finish, let's say, at the end of the year. That's, yeah. that's my read. Yeah, I don't think that story is, uh, yeah, as you say, it's not going to disappear just because uh, this wave is now announced and we move on to a different story for the next wave. I think mm -hmm. it's going to be intertwined. Uh, and what about the spread of characters then? We got basically one from every faction, apart from uh, obviously the Noble Bear and the Red Star, which... Uh, we just got, uh, yeah. We, got, we just got, which mm -hmm. makes sense. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, remind me again, what's your uh, faction? Or what's your favorite? Uh, I'm a vampire guy, cheaply. There you go. So I'm an Alithia guy. I have a whole shelf of that is my Alithia figures and then figures that are purple and black or vampire related. Uh, I've always been something of a vampire fan. I'm a fan of like Anne Rice books um, awesome. uh, uh, and things like that. So Alithia is, is my favorite faction. So we got a little bit of reference to the vampires, right? With the, uh, you got frost, frost ogres. ogres. So. Yeah. 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 That's cool. I, I mean, I, I wasn't paying too much attention to the faction when, they were revealing it and then Jeremy started talking about the white spine and I, that my ears pricked up. I was mm -hmm. like, well, that's, uh, that's the vampires, uh, you know, so that, that was pretty cool. Um, and then, uh, if you could only order one, now I know that would be an absolutely terrible situation, but, uh, if you could only order one. You know, it's, what it's funny. So I have, there's two that really jump out at me that are absolutely my favorites. But I think, like, if you were to have described this wave to me and said, okay, <clears throat> excuse me, without seeing it, you're going to get this and this and this and this and this. Without question, I would have said, gold skeleton two. Uh, I need that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I've always, I, I've never had an, an original gold skeleton. I still kind of want an original gold skeleton. I'm actually trying to finish up my own gold skeleton right now that I'll post some pictures Ooh. of. Um, and that's definitely one of my two favorites now that I've seen it with the wings and everything. I think the idea of, um, you know, cause Jeremy last night and previously has said that he never really liked the gold skeleton. I'm on the other side of that. I love the gold skeleton. I love the idea of yeah, just having the skeleton and there. making it crazy colors. Yeah. But the idea that he wanted to have like a lore or a story reason as to why the skeleton would be gold and that they're, you know, essentially fallen angels or whatever, yeah. I think is brilliant. But having said all of that, to me, the showstopper right now uh, is that as a two. I think she just flies off the screen at me. Um, you know, reportedly that they'll be coming out next week, next year, excuse me. I wouldn't be surprised if she's like a figure of the year candidate. I just think she's absolutely gorgeous. The purple soft goods. Um, and, you know, a 
Trevor's photo with the Hagnons uh, being yeah, raised yeah. from the dead by her doesn't hurt. So it's definitely as a two for me. Yeah, I'm not the biggest uh, Blue Hagnon fan, but I, I would <laughs> definitely pick up that print in a heartbeat uh, at Leeton's Con if Trevor chose that one as one of his uh, mm-hmm. prints to do for the event. Got um, yeah, she's cool. Um, I'm I've, I'm still struggling a little bit with the, the Thrace head, mm-hmm. the alternate head. Um, but, you know, maybe I'll come around on that. Um, maybe it's a see it in hand thing. Yep. Um, I think if you just showed me that figure and I didn't know anything about Thrace, I'd be like, whoa, mm-hmm. you know. So I do get it. And uh, I think she's a great figure. An interesting choice for version two, not yeah. one. Obviously, as because Eric and Jeremy spoke uh, on one of the live streams they did, uh, bef- wasn't the last one, maybe the previous one to that. Um, where they were kind of hinting at some version twos and maybe some characters that aren't as, you know, prominent as others. That got us thinking could be anything. And uh, as it was definitely then, I think Rich mentioned her in the last episode as a possibility. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I I hope I have got this right, because I remember listening to your um, uh, your podcast when you guys were talking about it and the topic of Bill Junowski from the Dork Layers uh, video about speculation yeah. about what the wave might be came up. And I think you had said, you know, I didn't really want to watch the whole video before we recorded because Absolutely. I didn't want my opinion to be influenced. And the funny yeah. thing is he does mention as but I think he there takes her out of the running at one point for, for one reason or the other, but it, it's funny. She actually did make it in as one of the version twos. Yeah. So, he covered his bases, you mm-hmm. know. He, he <laughs> um, actually, that reminds me. I need to go back and finish that that video. Um, and then, uh, never, never want to be really negative around here. But mm-hmm. just, just hypothetically, if you had to pass on one, uh, what what would be what would be the one you would pass? Um, so sort of the way I I look at it is. Uh, when I look at a wave, you know, I'll I'll often get the all in just because it's a good financial deal. Absolutely. But if I'm not in a financial position to do an all in, or if not every figure is speaking to me on the same level, what I'll do is I'll I'll pick and choose a little bit and then say, okay, I have the luxury of living in the Northeast in New Jersey and going to a lot of shows where the four horsemen are at. So if there's a couple that I want to wait and sort of see them in person before I sort of pull the trigger on that, uh, I can totally do that. Yeah, um, it makes sense. So right now, my plan as of right now is I've, I've sort of taken in the whole wave over the next week. I'm going to like kind of go through it and come up with a strategy and probably pull the trigger next next week. Um, I still think I'm going to do an all in. Um, but it, it, if I had to rank them, um, you know, as a and the gold skeleton two would be the top two. Then it would be the night uh, builder set, uh, and then as you kind of like go down through the figures, I, I don't. I, I hate to say this, but I keep coming back to Shui, like the new the new wizard, and I yeah. love wizards. Like when Poxes was yeah. revealed, and I was like, oh my god, we're getting wizards! This is so amazing, and I do think it's cool that we're getting like another kind of wizard that does look distinct. And listen, you give me a, a Force Ghost version. I love that with his head <laughs> and the hands and everything. So I like him. But um, if I was just going to pick and choose, he might be one that I, you know, I'll wait to see him at a show first, um, but still end up picking him up. So I'd, it's, you know, the honest truth is it's not that I don't like him. He's just, you know, if I had to pick, you know, three or four, he would probably miss the cut. Yeah, he's a little bit like uh, we've just got wizards. Mm-hmm. So if if he was the first wizard, we'd all be all us. I'm a wizard yep. guy as well. And mm-hmm. We'd all be going crazy. And uh, now that he's a little bit similar to the other wizards, and it's so we're we're trying to take it in. Is it, is it you know? But it is another one. I somebody posted a zoomed in pic- picture of the head, and now I'm starting to think, okay, it's it's different. Definitely, is a different vibe from it, even if it's the same, you know, bald head with a wizard beard. Um, so yeah, I think I think we'll we'll definitely come around on him. We'll be picking him up at a show if if we're not getting the all in. I'm sure you will. Yeah, and I get the character that they're trying to convey, and he does look more like a traveler. And his face, yeah. like the face cult, is different. Like this is a different guy. Yeah, there's you know? a you, you can see that he's lived a bit. You know, there is definitely a, um, some wrinkles and some real detail in the face. So yeah, um, 
Well, that's a good call. That's a very good call. Well, Jonathan, thanks a bunch for joining us and thanks for the support of the show, of course. And uh, well, we've been on your show a few times. I think this is the first time I've had you on here. Is that um, yeah, that might be the case. I mean, thank you for having me on. I'd, no, I no love problem. your guys' show and uh, yeah. uh, I really enjoy talking to you. We, we'll definitely get you on for a full show with uh, Ryan and Eric. And uh, of course, in November in New Jersey, we're going to have a lot of fun together. I'll see you then, man, <laughs> for sure. All right, I'm joined here by one of our patrons, Chris James, another one of our awesome patri- patrons. Uh, and I met Chris uh, at last year's Legion's Con and we had a lot of fun together. And can't wait for this uh, year's Legion's Con, Chris. I'm sure you're the same. Absolutely. It's going to be a blast for sure. <laughs> Are you catching the horsemen anywhere before then? or um, Street team event. Uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks, if everything goes right, it'll be uh, oh, which Heroes, one is that? Con up in, uh, Heroes Con Heroes in Charlotte. Con. Yep. Awesome. And then um, after that, it should be uh, Rally up at uh, Ishcon in, in August. Oh, you're going to make it to Ishcon. You said that, yeah, when we, yeah, were, yeah. we had our little uh, watch along last night. So Chris is uh, thinking of putting a little AirPod in for the, and he's going to listen to the Eurolegions watch along in one ear and the horseman. Look at there, look, he's got the shirt and everything. <laughs> I always love it. I see, I see now you post a couple of pictures, you know, on, on Facebook or whatever, at different things, whatever. And sometimes you have the Eurolegions shirt on and I'm like, little mini fist bump, you know. <laughs> I love this shirt. It's soft and it's just, it's it It's a good one, good. yeah. I, I love it. Shout- Shout out to Pete McCarthy. He, uh, his, uh, his supplier there sorted us out and uh, they did a good job. Very happy with them. Right. And uh, how are you feeling uh, after last night, Chris? The ashes of Agbend or what's your kind of overall impression? How are you feeling? Was it up to your expectations? Well, I, I've heard a lot of people say that like when, when you begin to think about something that the four horsemen are going to do, they tend to go in the opposite direction and like throw you a curve ball and it still blows your mind. So it's like, sure. it's not exactly like what I was thinking, but it's still really mm-hmm. awesome to see like the variety of all of these figures. Right. So it's like generally like the waves are like the way they've been is you get like one, you get like two factions Whereas this, you get you get a little bit more diversity and like variety, and seeing like the um, some of like the the version twos come come back and stuff like that. Yeah. It's it's really cool. So it's like it's I'm still really excited for the wave. Don't get me wrong. I think they're all awesome. Yeah. So it's just uh, you know still taking it all in, trying to figure out like what I want to do. I've already got a couple ideas for customs because I was actually <laughs> repainting a piece and then I saw one of the parts and I was like, all right, well, I guess I don't have to do that anymore. Just be patient. And then there it is. Yeah. There's, you know, it's in the color that I want. Put it, so put it on the back burner and then you get it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, hopefully. And that's the good thing about this wave. And a little plus point is that they're trying to get it with inside the ear uh, from mm-hmm. announcement to in our hands. So uh, I think that will, uh, that will help a lot with uh, the buzz around this wave and what people think, you know, because, no matter what you say, once you get the figures in hand, there's always a different, uh, you know, opinion or, you know, you, you suddenly see a figure and you go, OK, I kind of liked that. But now I'm like, For sure, this is my figure, you know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and um, uh, what about the, you know, when, when Jeremy announced the story during the week and kind of how was that kind of setting your expectations versus maybe what what we saw? Was there anything there that kind of stood out to you or? Not necessarily. It was, I was excited to see like where the story was going to go mm-hmm. and like what changes, if any, were going to be made. Um, cause like they had mentioned like the sacrifices and stuff like that. So it's like, I was really interested in seeing like, are they going to take away like one of the main characters? Is something like that yeah. going to happen? Like a really drastic like twist. Um, so in a way, it was kind of nice to not see any of the main characters go away where it was like the sacrifices of like the blue shield yeah. soldier and stuff like that. So, um, it was really, it, it wasn't what I expected, but still good in its, in its own way. Cause I was scrolling through, um, the cabal earlier and I don't remember what figure it was. Um, 
but they were talking about like their their idea for like the story and it was like really intriguing and really interesting like what they were what they were saying i wish i would have made a note of that but <laughs> it'll it'll be it'll be interesting to see where the story goes on from here for yeah. sure yeah that's like me every week in the show i suddenly get a brainwave and then i'm like oh but i can't quite get it all so i just need to say nothing um <laughs> and what about uh what about the factions? I mean, which which is your favorite faction? It's, I would probably have to say okay. it's between, yeah, kind of, but it's, it, <laughs> I'm, I'm a skeleton guy. I, I love skeletons. So it would be between yeah. Congregation and Necronominus and Poxus, really. Okay. So you got, uh, you got the gold skeleton, obviously. Yeah. Do you have a gold, an original gold skeleton in the collection? I do. Okay. I do. He's but not, he's not complete still... by any means, but I, I mm-hmm. have, I have the figure and some of the success. The yeah. figure. Yeah. And, uh, you're still going to add this guy, I assume. And, uh, I love the little story element around, uh, around the linked to the, um, the angel figure then as well. Mm-hmm. The, I, I really, I, I do dig that. That's awesome that they did that. Yeah. That's right. And Joe Roos, Joe Roos is a Florida guy as well, isn't he? Yes, sir. Yep. There you go. So there's a little Florida connection in that in that angel figure and then connected to the gold skeleton. So, yeah, I haven't I haven't told him this yet, but I'm not gonna call him Joe anymore. I'm just gonna call him by that name going forward anytime yeah. I see him. <laughs> so that's that was, that's just it. That was funny because uh, in our uh, episode we did with them where um we were doing the builder characters and remember I named my characters, I think it was uh, Gannix, which is the the Basque name for John. And Joe, mm-hmm. when he came around to do his in their episode, he was like, I couldn't find a good uh, name like John did for, for Joe. So <laughs> and it was like, Jeremy found one straight away. <laughs> yep. Leave it to him. <laughs> yeah. But come on, Joe, you can do this. You can do this. Um, do better. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> so we covered all the factions except the Noble Bear and the Red Star, which, uh, of course, we got the, the big wave last November. So, you know, nobody's really crying about those guys. Although I'm sure um, we might get a because uh, we've got the Bear Barbarian parts now um, between mm-hmm. Anubis and a few other figures. Uh, we now have the Bear parts. So I expect a, a real a Barbarian a builder maybe with those bare parts at some stage or some sort of a generic barbarian that would be pretty cool um right and then uh what about if i said to you right you can only order one from this particular wave uh what you what what are you going to be restricting your gold to or what's the best figure gold skeleton okay <laughs> he didn't hesitate guys he didn't hesitate uh, yep. And then on the op- and then on the opposite end of the scale, uh, what what are we uh, thinking about if if there was one that you had to pass on? And if there was only still one that necessarily I had to pass be on, one, I'm gonna. I'm sorry. Go ahead. My bad. I said it, 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 you could still like the figure, but you know, obviously, we have to rank them at some point. You know, right? Um, I'm gonna break Rich's heart, but it would be the Shadow <laughs> Centaur. <laughs> Well, Based. you and me both, like, I'd probably be breaking it. his heart at that. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one. You know, um, I still like it. I was saying to the guys, maybe maybe if it was a brute scale with that head uh, and that build, you know, the head and, and uh, maybe that skirt piece, I'd be mm-hmm. more into it. And the centaur is cool, don't get me wrong. And I love the variety, but yeah, it probably is the one that I'm least into as well. And I... Yeah, I can't really explain it. It's just a thing that I, I saw it and I was like, yeah, not as much for me. And maybe it's, right. I don't, I'm not really a big fan of Afarius either. The thing with Afarius for me was it was the first brute scale parts and that was really cool. But once we got the brute scale figures in, I'm not, I'm no longer <laughs> kind of fascinated right. with Afarius. Um, and then if we look forward into the rest of the year, especially for Mythics, uh, how do you think this is going to, I mean, I think that maybe the story is is continuing from here, you know, that that some of that teaser story that we got in the Great War, the Second Great War, that's obviously going to continue forward. How do you think that's going to play out? Or I, I think there's, I don't know if we're going to get another wave like this announced between now and Legion's Con, but I feel like if we don't, I feel like it's going to open it up to even more as to like what else was going on during this time. 
during the yeah. fall of Ophidian, right? So I think that's where mm-hmm. G-Con is really going to open up more of that story. And like you said, this is kind of just like a teaser going into that, like a prologue, if you will, into the bigger part of the story that we're going to get at G-Con. Awesome. And what sort of version twos do you think we're, we're uh, I think Oto possibly is a search for, for G-Con? I hope. Yeah. That would be awesome. He's going to... The, you know, they'd like to have the crowd maybe there to, to react to the, the Otho. That would be a pretty cool moment. Um, who else do we think of then? I think uh, my, my one from the last couple of shows, it might sound like a broken record, is Otho versus Urzok. You know, mm-hmm. that, uh, and what about the, the Goblin 2-pack here? Are you a uh, you fan of the, the Goblin 2-pack? I think I've heard a lot of people talk about it. When it when it comes to the two point the the goblin pack that's where I, I I love them I love the little goblins mm-hmm. like they're awesome I think this two pack is is great There's a lot of like different parts There's new parts I love the bare arms and stuff like that that we're gonna get Yeah So it's like I really dig that But that's kind of like my limit when it comes to like two point Like I'm not really a big fan okay. of the two point Like they're beautiful They're great I love the stories about them It's just I'll get them if I get like an all in or if I pick up like a lot, something like that, but it's not something that I immediately go after, but these for sure, I'm going to get like at least probably like a couple packs of them. Yeah. And that's where there was a lot of uh, new parts and because the parts were used, I mean, I think, you know, if we look back at legions, especially the mid year wave in a lot of years has been a lot of parts reuse. I think some people's favorite wave, uh, maybe over the years has been the Coliseum wave. Uh, possibly because a lot of those characters are difficult to get now, <laughs> you know. Right, right. There's a little bit of that about it. But that was a total repaint wave, you know. Um, and mm-hmm. maybe people at the time, some people were saying, oh, I don't repaints, but nobody's complaining about it now. Uh, and right. I think maybe this wave is, is going to end up a little bit like that. For sure. I think, I think a lot of, it's going to open it up because like, you have like my girlfriend and I was actually talking about this last night after, after we got off. And, um, uh, I think it's going to open it up to a lot of new, newer collectors to the line that didn't have an opportunity or wasn't aware of like the older figures. So that way oh, they yeah. at least have like a version two an updated version. But then I also really like the, for like the more seasoned and like veteran collectors that have been around for a little bit longer, where it's like the blue shield soldier, for example, or even, the the goblin two pack right there's so many parts that you could make like a couple figures but then if you've been around long enough you probably already have some fodder too laying around and then you could just incorporate that and just make a fodder figure basically so i think it's great on both aspects yeah for sure like i got the the lee j figure came with the extra upper arms Mm -hmm. and legs and yeah, I had some fodder pieces from previous customs I made that I could actually, I got another figure out of Allegiate just because I had other right. parts lying around that I'd used those pieces from. So that's a really cool aspect of, of that. And uh, you can definitely find those different parts among the different figures. So um, I think that's, that's what will keep us going, you know, and that's that they're easy customs, you know, they're, you know, just exactly popping parts on and maybe you do a third party head or, you know, I don't know, repaint a head from the, uh, from another figure and, uh, away you go. Yeah, there you go. Well, Chris, uh, this was awesome. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, giving us your little thought, uh, thoughts on, uh, this wave. And of course, thanks for all your support, uh, so far in our journey on the podcast. Absolutely. It's awesome to have you on board and can't wait to see you. And I speak for all three of us here, uh, in November. It's going to be awesome. Is your, uh, girlfriend coming again with you as yes. well yeah awesome so that'll be a lot of fun she's uh she's a lot of fun as well i remember when we were sitting around in the lobby uh and emil and tomas were uh, were kind of in full flow emil and uh they were talking about that uh was it the wolf king sculpt uh that len had done mm-hmm. the orc one it yeah yeah was, yeah uh, <laughs> that's one of my biggest memories from legion's con it was so much fun <laughs> cheers yeah, chris gonna Yeah. Cheers to you. Likewise. And then I'll, you know, just be having you guys in my ear at work. That's what I do. I listen to you guys every day. I'm going through my second playthrough (laughs) of all the episodes of you guys already. Oh my God. We need to do more. We need to do more. (laughs) Catching up again. 
Yeah, the fun thing about these uh, these interview episodes I'm doing now, or the uh, one or maybe two episodes, is that we will have uh, time to do a few more Patreon episodes. So that will be fun as well. So definitely, yeah, that'll keep you company at work. Cheers, Chris. Cheers to you. So I'm here with another one of our patrons. You all know him. He's Art by Ackerman. It's Curtis. How are you, Curtis? I'm doing most excellent. Excellent, excellent. So you've got a busy day ahead of you. You've got the customizing studio coming up. You've got yep. your own show with uh, Jesse. Who have you got on this week? As we, uh, we have got uh, Steve Mank on this week. Oh, that's um, Articulated Times, is it? Yep. On, on yeah. Instagram. He's, his photos are awesome. So that's going to be a lot of fun. That's true. You'll definitely be talking to Steve about how he's going to photograph these uh, these new mythics that we're we're going to talk about. Yep. <laughs> so Ashes of Agbendor, how did you find it? Anyway, I know you've had the, you had the live stream afterwards, and mm-hmm. and I've caught a bit of that, so I have a bit of an idea. But uh, you know, give give your your allegiance uh, verdict. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it it caught me by surprise. It was not what I was expecting, um, but that can be good <laughs> you know it's like yeah um I, I know a lot of us have said it that you know sometimes you know eric knows what we want more than we do and uh i think that's the case with some of these like i wouldn't have predicted these figures um but there's some of them that i really enjoy and you know lately my collecting has kind of changed a bit um just due to space due to customizing whatever um, instead of just, I used to do an all in and then I would maybe yeah. get a few more figures. And lately I've been kind of focusing on the ones that I really like and getting multiples of that one uh, or those. Um, yeah. so I've got, you know, like three in this wave that I really want multiples of, and then one that I'm, I just want one for the collection and then the rest, you know, kind of one of those, uh, you know, maybe I'll pick one up down the road, but kind of thing. So you know, the line's getting so deep now that mm-hmm. you, you kind of have to, you know, make some choices with your space in your collection. Like, you know, what do you want to have? So definitely when you're collecting those uh, Mondos from Hema, Hema yeah. Mondos. Uh, yeah. Well, and, and when, gonna be. yeah, when your collection is filled with a bunch of customs and stuff too, like yeah. that takes up a lot of well, space. Well, so. That's it as well. Being a customizer and also uh, buying customs from others. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we have Rich on our side as well, who's, I'd say he has more customs than l- mainline figures. So uh, that is the thing. And that can also be cool, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Um, we, we all end up with the cool collection one way or another. Um, and what about the story aspect here? I think pe- pe- that's where people maybe got a little bit um, uh, thrown off in their predictions uh, with the story drop to start with. It um, maybe suggest the things that people read into at least no more than us. I'll be honest, I didn't really get too much into the story. Um, mm-hmm. I was trying to set up for our after party. So as yeah. the stream was happening, you know, we had, we've done a couple of these after parties now after a reveal special. And on one of them, Source Horseman just totally crashed afterwards. Yes. And so we didn't have anything to pull up. So as the stream was going, I'm like snapping screenshots on my phone. I'm cropping them. I'm putting them in a yep. slideshow just in case Source Horseman wasn't up. Um, so I missed like all the things going on in the chat. I missed some of the story elements. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, just knowing my buddy Jesse, I'm sure he's going to be doing some like mythic minutes where he's going to be reading through those bios or you guys yeah. will. Um, and For I'll kind of sure. catch it there. But yeah, I did miss quite a bit of the story elements. Okay, cool. Um, and parts reuse then, uh, this is one of those waves. Uh, I said to a couple of the other people I've been talking to so far that uh, this reminds me a little bit of the Colosseum wave in terms of a lot of parts reuse. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Colosseum wave was pretty much all parts reuse, I think. Um, and that's one of the most popular waves when you look back now, at least people going back. Um so that's never been a problem for the line, but uh, an- anything step stand out to you here? I mean, the Thrace head maybe on uh, Azza, how did you find that? Yeah, no, I, I didn't. I mean, it, I've heard some people talk about that. Um, yeah. I mean, it totally looks like Azza me because of the paint job. Mm-hmm. I, I've said it before, but I, I think uh, 
the four horsemen do a great job of painting these parts in such different ways that you don't even realize that it's the same part a lot of times. Um, so, I mean, as a customizer, do I like new parts? Yeah. New parts are always fun. (laughs) Um, but when they give it to you in these, you know, new paint jobs, new schemes, new character creations, it's like, Oh man, I wouldn't have even thought of doing it that way. This is, you know, it's great. Um, so yeah, I don't have a problem with the part parts reuse. That's not an and issue then, for me. Yeah, even some of the parts that are parts reuse are actually parts that we haven't got yet because they're from like uh, Necronominus or mm. uh, the Red the Rising St- Sun's Wave. So um yeah, that's uh, that's also also interesting. Um right, uh factions then you are uh, if I remember well not uh, mo- here. I, I really like Aerith there just because of the oh, variety and the, and the size. Um, yeah. But I mean, I like everything. So there's, you know. We've got a, yeah, we've got a pretty much a one from each faction here, apart from the two that we got recently, which was the bear and the star. Mm-hmm. So um, something for everyone there. Um, in terms of if you could only buy one then, what are you getting? Um, man, that that's rough. But if it, if I could only get one, <laughs> it would have to be the frost ogre. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I I love anything in that kind of wintry color scheme. Uh, mm-hmm. When I was a kid, I would wait for like the first snowfall of the year. And, you know, all of my snow themed characters, I would take out and play outside with it. And it didn't matter. They'd be from all different lines. And I would yeah. create some sort of story that made sense on why they were together. And um, so, yeah, anything like that, I know, I know. I love Thalen. I love the ice troll. And so, you know, when you get a nice snow outside, taking them out and getting some photos is cool. This guy's going to fit right in with that. Um, and, you, and you've done some snow based customs, haven't you? Yeah. Over the years. Uh, yeah. I really love that color scheme. So, yeah, they're really fun to do. And he's going to fit in well with the ice troll as well. Mm-hmm. Because, um, it's yeah. And, and, and also the, the multiple looks that you get yeah. from it. What's you know, your favorite then from him of the two heads? Man, it's tough. Um, <laughs> I can say from from my side, I just loved the Viking, the barge head. I don't know why. Yeah. As soon as I saw it, it was like I went from kind of this is cool to okay, now I'm I'm you know definitely into this guy. You know, I think I'm leaning more towards the ogre head without the the helmet, without okay. the hat. Um, but uh, yeah, the bearded one is cool too. I mean, I'm definitely getting multiples. This is not one that there I can yeah. get one of. Um, yeah. So. Well, it kind of works then as well, you know, being a, an ogre kind of, you know, you're going to find a few of them roaming around in, in the. Yeah. And I mean, it's, snow. it's awesome that it comes with, you know, those pauldrons and everything. It's, it's kind of like, uh, like getting an ogre and a noble barch set at the, at the same time for just a yeah. regular ogre price. It's, and the soft goods, it's, yeah, yeah it's really the, cool. The white fur, you don't, you're not going to pick that up easily. So, uh, great to get that. From yeah, the factory, and yeah. I think it, what's what's weird is that is my favorite one, but it's also the only one that I had kind of a minor critique on, and and the, <laughs> the critique Real. was just I, I would like to see new ogre weapons. Like we we've had these yeah. same kind of ogre weapons like over and over again, and yeah. I, I would like to see some some new stuff. You know, we we talked about it on our live stream, but like you know maybe like a a big giant club. Um, you know, I, I had even suggested like a severed dwarf leg that he can be beating yeah, somebody with. Some sort you know? of a bone thing. Yeah. yeah. Some sort of a bone weapon. Yeah. yeah I, I think we've, I don't know if I've talked to you before about it, but and I definitely heard you talking about it before that, yeah, the ogre weapons, I'd love to see an update. Uh, mm. And I think that's a valid, uh, valid comment. Although it does leave room for uh, the likes of Wolf King and uh, yeah. those guys. Yeah, for sure. Detour does some amazing uh, does, ogre size weapons. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's all his weapons are kind of ogre size, whether you yep. go for, for <laughs> or not. Yeah. Steph goes big. Steph goes big for sure. And, uh, and then, uh, if you had to get an all-in minus one figure, so you had to pass on one. What are you? What are you passing on? Oof. Um. Uh, well, it's for me. It's it's a little. Um, I'm biased because I don't <laughs> like. I, I'm not a huge fan of the horses in general. Yeah. Like I dislike the centaurs even more. Like I just, okay. it takes You're up a lot of, there. yeah, it just takes up a lot of space and it just doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. I had the Afarius for a while 
um, tried a couple different poses and it just, it takes up dang near a whole detox cube. Yeah. And it's, it just doesn't do enough for me to warrant taking up that much space. So but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you there on that one. That's mine as well. Um, yeah, I think on the, on the, uh, after party, I, I kind of threw it up on the screen and I'm like, Hey, you guys are gonna have to talk about this one. Cause I got nothing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Rich's favorite. So I'm like, that's perfect. Yeah. So we can have and a good argument about it. You know, it that's the great talk. thing though. There's something for everybody. And, yeah. and the things that I like, maybe the thing that somebody else doesn't like and vice versa. And, um, you know, that's, that's fine. Like you don't have to have everything unless you're one of those guys that does have to have everything, but, yeah. but you know, find what you do like and, and get that. Um, that's, that's what I say anyway. Yeah. It's the guys that want to have everything that are probably the most picky because of course they're stuck. They feel like they're forced to buy everything because mm-hmm. they're, a, they're a completist, so to speak, right. in their head. Uh, so they feel upset when they're forced to buy something they maybe don't like. Right. <laughs> Whereas we can maybe step back and go, okay, I don't have to get one of him or the all in is the best value. So I'll get it and then I'll wait till I have it in hand and then I can see uh, if I want to sell it or whatever. Because the other beauty of this is for the most part, you get your money back on eBay at the worst. Uh, oh, yeah. You decide afterwards. So. Well, and that's, you know, up until this past year, I had been kind of, you know, just whatever they do, I'm all in on everything. And then I, I started getting to a point where I was running out of the ones that I really wanted to customize. And then I'd have yeah. all these extra ones that I didn't really want to do anything with. And I'm like, why am I, why am I getting all this stuff if I'm not really attached to the character? And there's, this, you know, I could spend that money on these ones that I do like and get more of them. Um, you know, which is, you know, when those two new Templars come out, Enoch and, and, uh, and Elijah, I think between the two of them, I got almost like 30 of them coming. So, um, yeah, well, you know, it's no surprise to me that you've been, uh, uh, advocating for God's fire to come back in, yeah. in Wolfsking because, uh, you're, you're going to get your hands on those new Templars, uh, in the next couple of months and uh, you need something to do, you know? Yeah. I need some heads for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the good thing is those things are so great that I don't know that I can even do anything with the body because it's just perfect. Yeah, but yeah, I'm going to need to create some characters so they don't all look the same. But you might have to work with uh, Darla to see if you can weather, uh, weather up the cloth goods a bit or something. Yeah, maybe, maybe exactly. A little, uh, a little technique for that. Um, and then, Speaking of uh, customs, uh, any kind of custom ideas that come with this wave or any kind of pop and swaps you were thinking of? or um, I, I think for me that that Kaipacha, which um, I, I just think that's a prototypical rogue build and it has yeah. so much potential. Um, yeah. You know, it kind of reminds me in Cosmic when I first saw Novi and Lean. And I was yeah. like, you know, I just looked at him like, man, you could do so much with this and make all these space Marines. Yeah. I look at this Kaipacha and I'm like, Mike, you could put a million different heads on this thing and yes. every one of them would look awesome. Like this is, it's just such a great build. Um, and the colors are great. I, yeah. That one's that one. I don't have a specific custom in mind, no, but I can I guarantee I'm going to have to buy several because of yeah. just some different ideas. It'll be a great one that, you know, when you're doing a custom head and you're fin- finished with the paint job and you just want to take a quick picture to to send around to your, oh, your yeah. buddies or whatever, you just stick it on him and go, right, because, you know, there it's it is. Work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is not the final build I'm doing with this head, but, you know, you get the idea. For sure. Yeah. And I, I do think, uh, I think Mal actually said it to me uh, as well, that he's he's the the mythics version of Novi and Lean for him now. Yeah, so, that, uh, that we, was the first thing I thought to... when I saw him. I was like, man, this is yeah. this guy is because the Novian Lee is the same. Like you could put any head on that. and It's just going to look yeah. good. Um, and then I, I would say the other real standout for me is the Goblin two pack. Like it, it's so much possibility, yeah, you know, yeah, just the that. different parts. And and it was cool to just, um, you know, I, I really like the idea of these two packs. The dwarf one I really loved. And this one, you, know, you just get so many different parts and variety in there that it, 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 uh, you know, even if you're not a customizer, even if you don't do a whole lot of swapping, the nature of that set makes you kind of forces you into doing some swapping and, and trying different looks. So absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, it's really sweet. Yeah. And, uh, I love the new pig uh, goblin head. That yeah. Really, that really says something to me. I don't know why, but, uh, it's really cool, really nicely done. And I'm, uh, I'm happy, uh, that a couple of those goblin, uh, the guys that run the goblin group got a, got a little, uh, 
name on the on the different uh, builds. So that was uh, that's a nice little tradition they're doing with the two packs. So yeah, that was know. awesome. You know, the, they, them them getting their call outs and then uh, yeah. a couple of the enablers getting some call outs. So, yeah. um, you know, the 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 company continues to really take care of the fans. And I mean, you know, nobody, none of us act actually deserve a tribute figure. Like, I, you know, it's just, but for them to do that is, is really cool thing. You know, it's just a, a nice, it just shows how connected they are with the community, you know? Yeah, ab- absolutely. And, uh, you know, maybe they'll do a Templar two pack of some, some stage Curtis and we could, <laughs> you could be in line. You never know. There you go. <laughs> um, and then, one last thing uh, before we get out of here is uh, how do you think this kind of sets us up for the future then for GCon and for, uh, you know, what what do you think the ground is set for there, you know? I don't know. I, I really hate speculating because it. I feel like there's there's some, you know, I hope it's okay for, for me to address it, but there's kind of some negativity yeah. in the community right now. And course, I think... Yeah. I think some of that comes from people get their mindset on a certain thing. And then when they don't get exactly that thing, they're let down. And so I yeah. try not to do the speculating because I I want to just keep my expectations low. And I don't want to put, I don't want Eric to make what I want. I want Eric to yeah. make what he thinks should be there and it, I'm going to enjoy it. Um, so, you know, I, I do think the way that they let it off with the, um, deluxe night builder and talking about how that relates to otho uh, it, it really feels like we're going to get an otho yeah. at some point soon um i don't know whether that's at gcon or what um but yeah i just i, I just think you know keep your expectations uh, have zero expectations just yeah just, just be waiting for what they deliver and find what you like out of it and and have fun because they're toys and it's supposed to be fun yeah, it's a little bit like, you know, if, if you're waiting for your favorite band to release a new album, you're you're not going to be in telling them what songs to do. You know? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? yeah, no, do that acoustic one. You know, we don't want a rocky one. You know, it's like, OK, but, but yeah, we come at the speculating from, you know, we just want to have a bit of fun. And yeah, I definitely don't think it's a, it's an issue if, if I'm wrong. Uh, I even titled the episode where we speculate that we get it wrong. Because we yeah. don't expect to get it right. We get maybe two things right. I think um, if you go in with that attitude, like, hey, yeah, well, okay, we're going to do this speculating, but but we're not expecting this to happen. And I think the other thing is, is that like going into the last G-Con wave, so mm-hmm. many things happened that people were predicting that, you know, with the Scapular 2, the, Till- or the, the Atlas 2, the Bear, yeah. like people were predicting those things and then they came true. So then it's like, oh, well, now we can predict these things. And and yeah. when we predict them, then they're going to happen. And so you had people talking about dragons and talking about this and that, and it yeah. just, it didn't happen. Then it's like, so I think you're right. As, as long as you're knowing, hey, we're going to have some fun with this, but yeah. I, by no means if these things don't happen, are we going to be upset? Then I think you're good. And then lastly, uh, are you someone that's, uh, if there ever is to be a dragon, are you, are you someone that's uh, up for that or are you more? Into yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I'll find a place to put it. Um, yeah. I, I think that I would love to see what their version of a mythic dragon would be. Yeah. Um, but if we never got it, I'm not going to be disappointed. Um, it's, it's not something that I feel like I need in my life, Yeah. but if they do it, I'm going to buy it. So awesome. Awesome. Well, Curtis, thanks a million for taking the time uh, to do this little interview with us. And thanks for all your support so far. Absolutely. Can't to uh, can't wait to see you in person again in November. Uh, uh, we're going to have a little, little shout out real quick, if, you, if yeah. I can. Yeah. For anybody listening to this, if you're not on their Patreon, get on these guys' Patreon. It, it is well worth listen. Thank you, Chris. I know I do a lot of super chats. I subscribe to a <laughs> lot of Patreons. I'm telling you from personal experience, this is the absolute best one. So awesome. get on there. See, and we didn't even pay him for that. <laughs> <laughs> and shout out your uh, shout out your 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 stuff there uh, for the listeners, Curtis. Just oh, I'm, I'm everywhere to everyone. Um, your main one. So Sunday, the, Sunday night show. The, is the main on one is, yeah, show? Shooting the Shelf Sunday nights with uh, Jesse yeah. Arnold. Uh, that is on the Just Shelve It channel on YouTube. Um, we also have a customizing studio in the Cabal that we do on Sundays. Uh, that's a lot of fun. Just kind of a fellowship thing for people to get together and work on, you know, dios, painting, photography, 
just hanging out, whatever you want to do. Um, so yeah, th- those are kind of the main ones. And then I, I, I obviously do some other shows and show up wherever, but those, those are kind of the main ones. Cool. And if you want to get into that customizing studio, people should drop you a, a DM. Yeah, just message me or Jesse and we'll put you in the group and go from there. Very cool. Well, thanks, Curtis. Talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you. So I'm here with Eugene Unick, uh, all the way from Nebraska. And uh, he's uh, another one of our awesome Patreons. And he's um, a customizer extraordinaire, has been at Legion's Con the last couple of years. Uh, how are you, Eugene? Good. How are you doing, John? Very good. Yeah. You might know Eugene as a Dr. Grimm Customs on the Instagrams. He posts loads of uh, cool stuff there. So um, go and check him out over there. Um, how's the customizing been going so far this year? A bit slower than normal? You're trying to ramp it up? Yeah, it's been a bit slower. Uh, normally, I only coach my son's one team, but I've coached multiple teams this year. So uh, Okay. In which sport? uh basketball and baseball but okay. baseball will be done here in about two and a half weeks and that's usually when i kind of hit my stride because good weather so i can prime a bunch of parts and have yeah. a lot more free time because i'm not giving up four days a week to coaching in our practices so yeah those uh kids sports are busy when you're uh you can be taxi driver and then if you're coaching as well on top of everything else uh yeah i can see how that uh, cuts into a lot of time um, well, Ashes of Agbendor, how did you find it? Give us your overall impression. The overall impression is I think it's a really nice kind of wave that's directed both at uh, long time and newer uh, fans of the line. It's, uh, you know, there's been a few comments that I've seen repeatedly where, you know, oddly see people complaining about reuse of parts for the first time in forever, but there's a lot of new parts and the, you know, the parts that are reused are ones that we haven't gotten either in those colorways or not in those combinations. There's a few figures in particular that, you know, the parts library they've got, it, they're harder parts to find. So it's, I think it's a really good balance of, you know, trying to bridge a bit of the, with the nod to the old, while also giving um, a look forward to what may be to come. So I, I think it's a nice bridge that, should hopefully everybody should find a sweet spot for something they like on it. Yeah, that's a that's a very good uh, kind of measured take, I'd say. Yeah, <laughs> we need more of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and coming into this, what was like? How how does what we got kind of line up with what you thought we might have got, or or did you did you even kind of think? Were you too busy to think? I you know I had a couple chats going. Um, one with my good friend Daniel Douglas uh, Crisis. And he, we kind of tossed some ideas back and forth. I think, you know, there's kind of the, everybody kind of expected maybe like an Otho version 2.0. I think that was kind of Mm -hmm. the popular one. Um, I think what I expected more of was, I thought we would have probably maybe a six character wave, probably mostly version 2.0s of existing characters or army builders uh that were maybe we hadn't seen previously you know maybe it was you know like some dark knights or maybe it was would have been like a new race of orcs or just some some that i think might have filled out some of the existing ranks more so i was woefully off on all of those (laughs) so no but i think i think you know if we look at the, the knight builder i mean that's kind of you know building out ranks for sure uh, and then we got the angel uh, figure, the Ayosef, uh, and the gold skeleton. So, I mean, they're all kind of, uh, you know, they can easily be army built. And I guess those ones are going to be uh, very much joyful from a customizer's point of view. I mean, that's so, night, uh, that night builder pack. I mean, you can do so much with that. And yes. by the time we get that, we'll probably have the Necronominous Knights as well. So... Uh, it'll be, it'll be, be a night overload of nights. <laughs> yeah. Joe Russo's not going to know what to do with all his nights. <laughs> yeah. It's like that time you couldn't get a green orc for, for love nor money. Uh, and then it came around for full circle again. Uh, I think last year it was quite easy to, to pick up a green orc between the reinforcements and uh, 
uh, the tactics figures and all that. So these are how these things come around, you know, and even, uh, you know, there was a point when it was very hard to get a, a legions uh, from a retailer, like they just no. weren't, didn't have stock. Uh, and now we have them everywhere and we're still right. complaining about something or not. <laughs> it's just human nature. Um, and uh, so you kind of talked a bit on the reuse. Uh, obviously, this is the type of line it is, isn't it really? I mean, we are lucky in a way that the big wave every year at G-Con has a lot of new parts and the the sport when we're watching that reveal is always, oh, that's a new part or, oh, they finally did dwarf scale this or, you know, uh, they finally did whatever in 2.0. So uh, I think here it's cool. There is some still new parts that they said they had tooled already, just haven't used. So, you know, there is that. Uh, and obviously we get new soft goods. So that's pretty awesome. But uh, how are you looking at this from a customizer's point of view then? I think from the customizing perspective, uh, for me, a lot of what I would say have been the harder to come by parts from some of the waves, you know, like Alithia yeah. or even Erythir are pretty prominent. So I appreciate that because I don't really want to have to, you know, tear down a bunch of, you know, Red Shield soldiers or Magnuses yeah. or <laughs> Valaks <laughs> to get some of these parts. So I, granted, we've had some of them, you know, reused a bit, like, you know, with Dubon, who's been pretty plentiful. Yeah, but that's true. You know, if there's a circumstance where I don't have to do a full on repaint, I'm always in favor of that. And, you know, starting with a black base is always my preference when it comes to customizing things. Yeah. So, you know, the uh, Pachai, I, I'm probably butchering bur bur the name, but the, you know, the Rogue, I, I really like yes. that as a base for a lot of projects that I've got in mind. Yeah, he is, uh, he is amazing. I actually talked to Curtis as well. Uh, uh, as part of this interview series and he said that uh, or I think we agreed that that's the kind of a figure that you could put any head on um, you know or even if you're just doing a custom head and you wanted to snap a quick picture to send around to your buddies what do you think of this paint job <laughs> he's yeah. one of those ones you can just stick it on it's going to look good no matter what absolutely <laughs> so yeah I, I will definitely be getting multiples of him he's an awesome figure and I love I think Balam is my favorite figure in the line uh I wouldn't say at this stage he's maybe the best figure in the line, but, you know, uh, he's still my favorite because of nostalgia and because he's a cat and I love cat people. So I think he's still got the most unique paint job, too. That's, that's true. One, yeah, that's one of my favorite ones that they've done. I haven't attempted to replicate ever, that, but yeah, it's so say, unique. Have you ever tried to um, to do that armor? No, that <laughs> that's on my list to do Dennis, sometime. I think Dennis has maybe done it. Um, I wouldn't be sure, but. He might have done it once in upon a time, so we, I'm going to ask him at Legion's Con at the bar. I'm having my now traditional pint with Dennis at some point. <laughs> it's a good time to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he'll be getting the paints out. He'll be running them out of his car and say, "Look, I've got these paints. Let's do it here on the counter." <laughs> and we're only laughing because it's probably half true. Um, and faction-wise, uh, pretty cool that we got uh, a bunch from all the different factions, except the two um, that were most recently released, you know, the Red Star and the Noble Bear. So uh, what's your faction again? What's your preferred faction? It's one of them where I kind of, I don't know that I have a favorite because okay. I, I think if, you know, I tend to lean more towards uh, with my customs, kind of more either the Knights or the, you know, the Demons or Fury Orcs. Yeah. So, I don't really have a preferred one, Aerithir, if I had to pick one. But, you know, I like Aetheron, I like Aerithir, I like the Convocation. Um, I, I like, you know, like Necronomous. I mean, I don't really have a preferred one. I, That's a good way to be then. You get a bit, you, you never get uh, disappointed. Um, but if I had to restrict you to just one figure from this wave for for your own collection or for customs or for whatever, what would you pick? Let's see. Oddly enough, I think I would probably pick the Goblin 2-pack. Mm, that's a good one. Because I really enjoy painting the Goblins. There's a 1.0 buck and there's a 2.0 buck with new parts yeah. we haven't gotten before. So if I had to stick with just one from the wave, that would be my choice because I think that's got the most versatility because you can do the 1.0s or the 2.0s 
and it appears to be the most new parts from what I looked at. I could be wrong, but I yeah, that's you, what it no, appeared to be. Probably right. Yeah, yeah, definitely those uh, bare those bare arms and and stuff and bare upper legs. I think they're uh, they're a great addition to that. I love the the little pig head goblin. Mm. Oh, yes, he's amazing. <laughs> Um, and then it brought back two of my favorite goblin heads too. So I really enjoy. I love that yeah. Nick head. It's such a good one the for Nick customs. Head is awesome. And That's the same the one they the put the, the war paint on, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, awesome to get that. Uh, and then if I could say to you, you can have an all in, but I have to steal one out of it. Which one would you would you not be upset if I the the shadow centaur? And it's really the only reason for that is that. I've got so many horses and horse bodies that having another one, I, I think the centaur is yeah. great and I like Aphareus a lot. I think it's just more for me personally, I haven't been able to visualize or conceptualize a lot of good custom repaints because yeah. I like to do full repaints and the time it would take to do that on a centaur with the horse body <laughs> and the, you know, the brute torso, that's a bit more than I, I tend to want to do most times gotcha yeah but it's that's really the only reason why I, I think it's a magnificent figure i just think if, if i had to skip one that would be the one that i would have to choose fair enough yeah i'd like to if, if we could have got that maybe as a brute scale uh figure with that new head mm -hmm. would, would have preferred it myself as well but um i know there's plenty of people that like the centaur as well i think rich uh has said that it's his favorite so you know that just proves that yeah. you know and I'm with you. I, that's the one I would leave out. So, you know, just proves there isn't really a bad figure. It's more just per personal preference. Uh, Absolutely. And then, and then looking forward to the rest of the year, uh, how do you think this sets us up? Any kind of wish lists or, or ideas for, for what we might uh, see at GCon or uh, even before then? Who knows? I hope that it sets us up for more, for lack of a better term, tertiary characters. Because I, yeah. I feel like that's one thing people have, you know, kind of wanted a lot, what, you know, whether it's like, you know, I think to, uh, I think it was Jeremy Wilson makes like that rogue highwayman sculpt, yeah. you know, but just kind of maybe more background type characters that can fit a, you know, a bunch of different type of stuff, you know, whether it's villagers, whether it's. But also named versions of those characters I like, you know, mm -hmm. that's at right. least I don't know about you, but. You know, this, so this, uh, as you say, his name is difficult. Um, Kai pa Pasha, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the rogue guy. I'm, I'm happy that he has a name. I'm, yes. I don't want that he's a generic rogue, but you can make him a generic rogue and you have the three head scubs. So, uh, happy days. Right. Cool. And cool. that's me is the best of both worlds because you can either have them, you know, just as stand ins in a shot or stand ins on a display shelf, or you can have them the primary lead character because they are named characters. Right. So I, I think rest of the year, I hope that we see more of that. I would really like to see more of um, some of Basilia's get rounded out and maybe a bit more of uh, Bach and a lot more of the body 2.0 females in particular, just a bit more variety there. Yeah. Selfishly, I still want a... Uh, like a you know plague doctor because you know that's that's, that's <laughs> something I really want to make but yeah. <laughs> you know maybe that's probably just tied more to you know my background that, and all that but that might be something for figure obscura maybe you know that type of a, of a character I would like that yeah I w yeah. I would be very much all over that <laughs> you take it in mythics figure or whatever way it comes yeah. is that it and give me a space <laughs> give me a space plague doctor that's fine too you know wherever. <laughs> And possibly a new faction maybe uh, coming up uh, to to advance the story a bit. Maybe that wouldn't be wouldn't be a I, bad thing. You know, I, I kind of wonder if maybe they're leaning into that a little bit. You know, you look at mm. the you know, like the Joe Russo tribute, the backstory that mm -hmm. they had on that. That almost feels like between that and the resurrected angels with the gold skeleton that it could lean yeah. heavily into that. I, those were the the two things that kind of stood out to me when I was rewatching the show. And yeah, because I'm I'm not as well versed in the lore as you know most are but that uh you know those two kind of stood out to me as this could really go a lot of interesting ways moving forward awesome well moving forward uh, we're going to see each other at legions con i can't mm -hmm. wait
Can't wait I'm to see all the to. stuff that you have on your table. And uh, of course, we'll have a few texts between now and then going, look what I did. Look what I did. What do you think of this color match? All that good stuff. Because uh, Eugene is one of my uh, best painting buddies uh, for all that kind of stuff. Uh, and we seem to have similar styles. So it works well for us. So uh, can't wait to see you there, Eugene. I'm looking forward to it. I'm counting down the days already. It's, uh, that, that's my <laughs> yeah. time of the year where I, you know, finally get to see all my all my buddies. So I, exactly. looking forward to it. We will we will enjoy the summer in the meantime if we get some good weather. But we will uh, we will definitely be happily springing into November. Yes, absolutely. Yeah.